Hey guys, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. And I want to do a video on switching school. Generally, that's not seen as something that's very, that's a very good thing to do. But you have to acknowledge that if you make a mistake and you, know, you, have, to, you have to allow for room to make a change. Now, really, it, it shouldn't be such a big decision, but it is. I'll, I'll give you from an instructor's point of view. When I teach somebody, and I, and I take somebody under my wing, and, and, and Dave's in the same way, and that's pretty much why I have this style of teaching, is that you're now my family member. Um, you, you can come to my house, you know, I, you know you're, you're welcome in my house, you know, you, you know um, like we have these parties all the time, and you know, everybody comes to the house and we, we do that. Um, but you're, you're a family member, if I, I can help you in any way, I will. And it doesn't have to be all jujitsu related. You know, so if I, if I think in those kind of terms, then at least for me, once I have you in my school, then I latch on to you and I, I take you on and I want to make you the best person that I can make you. And, and I especially want to do it where jujitsu has helped me. I want to help you with it. So anyway, that's, that's my side of the story. On the other hand, you may not look at it that way. You may look at it as simply a consumer purchase, right? A transaction. And, you know, if you look at it from a transactional point of view, then decisions are much easier to make. So let's say you come into the school and you, there's something about me or the school or the people in the school that you come to realize you don't like. Then by all means, you know, leave. Um, just let, let me know or let your instructor know, hey, you know what, things aren't working out. Um, it's nothing personal, but I'm gonna leave. Fine, right? It happens all the time, right? There, there's a revolving door in a school, right? Um, we may have, you know, let's say we have 10 new members come in in a month, but we may have three leave at the same time, you know, net, net, we make seven new members. Um, or there may be a month where, you know, nobody comes on and two people leave. But over time, you know, if we provide a good service, our school will grow as it has been over the last four years or so that we've been doing it. But if you don't have that attachment to your instructor, then by all means, you know, it's time for you to go. Now that's just for that, okay? But what if you love everybody there? You know, these are great people. And you know, the thing is though, you're not learning the jujitsu you wanna learn. And I get this a lot, right? Because, you know, we specialize, you know, Dave and I, Jack, Fernando, we go way back. Um, you know, Dave and I started in the 80s, Fernando, Fernando started in the early 90s, and Jack started in the mid-90s. So when we learned jiu-jitsu, there were very few people teaching it. You know, in the U.S., you had the Gracies, you had the Machados, you had Pedro Sauer, Fabio Santos, Joe Marrera. In, in Southern California, or in the area, and Pedro's in Utah, and, and Helsin in Hawaii. That's really it. So everybody taught very traditionally. So we all learned the same philosophy, concepts, you know, everywhere. You know, there wasn't there wasn't uh, a lot of American influence at the time where you have people with wrestling backgrounds or people with other martial arts black black belts coming in and teaching it and then kind of blending it together and changing things around. There also was no IBJJF, so there wasn't a lot of competitions. You know, you might have had two competitions a year um, in Southern California then. So, but let's say the jujitsu. The you know, I get this a lot. You know, hey Ryan, I want to learn tr the traditional stuff but um, I'm at a school that teaches competitively, you know, competitive jiu-jitsu. And everything we do is on a timer. Everything we do is, you know, they're, they're explaining in class about two points, four points, three points. Uh, make sure you hold the position for three seconds so you can get your points. You know, they say, you know, we don't do any self-defense. Maybe they do it in the beginner class, the fundamentals, but after that, we don't do it anymore. And, and, and you want to learn the traditional stuff. So you have a couple of options. Number one is you can just do self-study um, do like a Gracie Academy thing or, um, you know, Gracie online, or you can take privates from instructors in your area or wherever you travel that do the self-defense or tr traditional stuff. So you can kind of, um, fill in what you're doing. But on the other hand, you say, you know what, it's nice that I do that and I learn this stuff, but I really don't have the occasion to practice it because all we do in school is sport. Right? Or let's say you wanna do sport, you wanna compete more because you're just that type of person and all your school does is traditional. And you want to be in a more competitive environment, you wanna be in a competition team, you wanna have classes where they focus on competition rules and all that. You know, at any rate, what you're learning is different from what you want to learn. But, the big but is, 
you love the school you're at. Your professor has become family. Everybody in there, you guys are all, you guys are all great friends. You spend a lot of time with each other. The problem is the jujitsu you're learning is not what you want to learn, right? So that's what makes it kind of hard because you've you've built a foundation in that school, right? So you're thinking to yourself, you're thinking now trying to think to yourself on a transaction level so you can justify going somewhere else. But at, a, at an emotional level, you're very tied to the school. So what do you do? You know, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because jujitsu guys are very tribal. You know, and it's not just jujitsu. It happens in CrossFit too, um, where you know you're either with us or you're against us, right? And it's sad to to put it that way, but it is. I try to look at it this way. You know, if I'm not providing to you what you're looking for, then it's your right to go somewhere else, and I'm not going to be upset at you. You know, we're not going to see each other around as much because you're not going to be coming to the school. You're going to be spending time in a new school. I don't have any animus toward you because. We're very specialized in what we do. We don't go out of our box. So if you want to go outside of that box, I have to respect that decision for you to do that. Now, I've got people who have left other schools to come to us to learn the traditional stuff. And they tell me, you know, they, they would bump into their old professor and, you know, you know, they thought they left on good terms, you know, waited out the, to the end of the contract or continued paying for the life of the contract while they went over somewhere else. Let them know, gave them a heads up with everything. See them in the market. Hey, professor, how you doing? It's been a while. Professor just looks right past him and walks away. That's kind of sad. So, you know, a lot of people fear that. You know, if I leave, then that's what will happen. And that's kind of a, a tough thing, right? You know, sp you know, especially if you've been at that school for a while and you've gotten to be close friends, then what it basically tells you is that, you know, your, your friendship really wasn't a friendship. It was just a business relationship. Um, and that, uh, you know, you were only friends with them while you were in the school. So here's the way I look at it. I have my circle of friends. I have my circle of jujitsu members. And sometimes those circles overlap, meaning I have a friend who's also a jujitsu member or a jujitsu member who also is a friend. So if a particular person who, who, who is in an overlapping circle ends up splitting that circle up and he extricates himself from the jujitsu side of my life does that mean he's no longer a friend as well no of course not he's still my friend we don't have a jujitsu relationship anymore that's 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 really it you know it is disappointing to me you know if, if i you know if i give my heart and soul to making this person better in jujitsu and they end up leaving then well yeah i mean it's it kind of sucks but really that's just the way life is Right? Life is full of successes, disappointments, failures, and you just have to move on, right? And if a student leaves me because I'm not fulfilling what they need, then how am I or why am I to be upset about that? I really shouldn't be, right? I need to step back and I need to evaluate myself and tell myself, you know what, that's, that's really, it, it shouldn't be an issue. It hurts, but at the same time, it's nothing, it, it's something that's out of my control. And, you know, as I've gotten older, I've learned that I can only control what I can control. I, I, I can't get upset about what I can't control. If you have to leave, you know, you're going to have to evaluate things. Now, if you're neither friends nor like the style of jiu-jitsu, then it's easy, right? Just make sure you, uh, you do it the right way, you know, cancel out or, you know, talk to the professor, just say what you're doing and then go. But really, I don't have an answer for you. I can't tell you what kind of decision to make if you want to change, you want to change, but you, you have a lot of, you've developed roots into that school. You know, that's just something that you're going to have to decide. So anyway, I hope it helps. So, you know, don't feel bad for the instructor. Just, you know, do what you have to do for yourself. Because in the end, if you're not happy, then you're going to be a cancer in the school anyway. And I'm sure the professor wouldn't want you there if you don't want to be there anyway. If he does, then he just wants your money, right? And if that's the case, he's doing it for the wrong reasons, in my opinion. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with making money if you do it running a school as long as you're providing a great service. So that's where I am on that. And I hope you're all doing well. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon channel if you want the techniques. And if not, just be sure to subscribe and comment below. Take care now. Bye-bye. Oh, and happy training. Bye now.